I want to talk about powering our circuits today. And you know, if you're if you're working with your Arduino, there's really nothing to it, but you know, you plug it in to the breadboard. You grab whichever flavor of USB cable fits your particular flavor of Arduino. <laughs> you plug it in and you've got power. Simple, right? It is. Well, what if you're not using an Arduino? And what if you're just doing some basic electronics? I mean, sure, you can get a bench power supply. But how many USB cables do you have laying around? I mean, if you're anything like me, you've probably got quite a few. So let's whip up a quick and dirty USB to breadboard 5 volt power supply that we can use with either a wall charger or a USB power bank. So what I'm doing right now is just I cut the end of that off and I'm going to strip it back this is the shielding I'm going to remove most of that <laughs> looks like my uh my clippers are getting magnetized. Guess I could use a degausser, huh? All right. So now let's remove more of this. We don't need any careless whiskers. So, we've got four wires here, black, red, white, and green. I'm going to take an educated guess that the two we want are the black and the red. So for right now, I'm just going to fold the other two out of the way. And I'm going to strip a little bit of the black and the red. Just a little. Doesn't want to really want to strip. <clears throat> Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to test these with the multimeter to check polarity because we do not want any mistakes. So we're bringing the multimeter, put on a voltage, I've got the little mini grabber clips on here, I love these. So we'll grab the red, grab the black, make sure they're separated. And then we will wonder what the heck I just did with the power bank I had. Oh, one moment. All right, found it. Let's see what we get when we plug her in. 
5.15. So I was right. Red is positive, black is negative. Let me get the multimeter out of here. Next, I'm going to remove the white and green wires. They are not necessary for our application today. I'm going to bring in the soldering iron. And I'm going to begin by tinning these wires. I'll be using 6040 rosin core solder. Tin the end of the iron, aids in heat transfer. go all right my wires are now nicely tin you can see that all right next up Header pins. So we're going to want a pair of header pins, which will nicely snap off of there. Hold there real nice in the helping hands. solder on the pins there as I was taught in the Navy solder flows where solder has been and now I should just be able to heat these up and flow them together. Oh, darn it. Get a better grip on them boys. not going as well as I'd hope. Let me reposition and readjust. All right, I had these two clamps. Got the, the little double clamp action going there. You can see that wire is just a bit too springy. This is like a comedy of errors, isn't it? I'm just, these wires are pretty stiff. I'm just 
bending them around a little bit here to get them where I would like them to be. And yes, a little bit of flux would have made that flow better. And a little bit of heat shrink would have made this neater, but I'm out of heat shrink, so we'll be using electrical tape. There we go. Can we focus on that? Can we focus on that? Try this again. Focus on the hand. All right, let me insulate this and we'll be back again. All right, we got good old electrical tape here. Well, it's not good old electrical tape. It's cheap old electrical tape from the Dollar General that's around the corner from my house. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to buy some more heat shrink. That would have made this so much easier. I also had some of that liquid electrical tape. But I can't find it. And remember, we used electrical tape for a long time before there was heat shrink. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just not as sexy. It ain't beautiful, but we now have a 5 volt power supply that plugs directly into a breadboard. And I know you're saying 5 volts, that's nothing. Well, 5 volts is plenty. Plenty of chips will work on 5 volts. Anything you're messing with with LEDs will work with 5 volts. Just make sure the wall wart you're using or the power bank you're using can handle the current and uh, you'll be good to go. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you think it's stupid, give me a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for?